So it seems like StockX is the most hated company in the sneaker game right now, but why? Like I'm not just talking about the recent controversy with Nike and StockX and the selling fakes and all of that, like obviously that plays a part, but I'm talking about just general people. They seem to dislike StockX even if they continue using the platform. I mean, take a look at any comment section underneath a post about StockX and you'll just find a bunch of people saying how much they dislike StockX. But is StockX really that bad or are people just piling on because it's practical a meme at this point. Well, let's find out. When StockX first launched back in 2016, it seemed to be received relatively positively. The co-founder Josh Luber was after all a sneakerhead himself. It really came across as a relatable guy creating something new for the sneaker game where people could buy and sell and just find out how much their sneakers were worth. But from day one, StockX was destined to change the sneaker game forever. Fast forward to today, you can see it most definitely has. Depending on how much credit Credit you want to give StockX for creating the rift between sneaker collectors and sneaker resellers. However you want to see it, StockX really was the pioneer for something like this. I mean, we had marketplaces like eBay and Amazon, but something specific to sneakers really only existed when StockX started. StockX also had investments from big names like Mark Wahlberg and Eminem, which furthered their takeover to becoming the conglomerate that it is today. I think the first major blunder StockX went through, which I think you can add to the tally of the different ones we're going to talk about in today's video. But the first one was really the massive data breach that happened in 2019. In August that year, StockX had sent an email to its users, urging them to change their account passwords. The email was short on details and really referred to system updates. They would go on to admit receiving alerts of suspicious activity. Two days later, TechCrunch revealed the real reason behind this suspicious activity. A data breach exposed nearly 7 million records from StockX users. It took until August 8th for StockX itself to announce the hack and what measures it was taking. Now to be exact, it was actually 6.8 million of StockX's users that were affected by this data breach. That data was stolen and then sold on the dark web. According to Input Magazine, people are still dealing with the aftermath and StockX hasn't been much help. I mean, even my account was hacked back then. I had someone change all of my personal data in the app and if I hadn't noticed and quickly changed my password, the hacker would have been able to make purchases on my account and charge it to me. I'm sure many of you guys were affected as well. Now around that time, a new problem for StockX started and this will become the bigger problem which it's still facing today. People started making videos and posting it to YouTube about StockX and their 100% legitimate guarantee. Videos like I sold fake sneakers on StockX and StockX sent me fakes were gaining millions of views. And like like I said, this topic of StockX and selling fake sneakers has been growing ever since. And I believe it's still the biggest talking point when it comes to the platform. Now the problem with these videos, even though I'm sure some of them are accurate, you can't be 100% sure that all of them are being honest. I mean, there's a clear incentive for making a video like this. It's super clickable and usually you get a lot of views, or at least back then you got a lot of views. But it's not just YouTube accounts claiming that they've received fakes from StockX. There's a large number of people saying they've got fakes from StockX, whether you find that on Instagram, Reddit, or Twitter. There's even stories of people saying that the shoes they sent off to StockX were getting swapped out and then sent back for failed authentication. However, StockX still remains to keep its 4 out of 5 star reviews on Trustpilot. Out of 29,000 total reviews, 24% of them are rating it super negatively, and the majority, 59% of them, are giving them excellent reviews. Keep in mind, this is a 3.8 billion dollar company averaging about 30 million visitors to the website every single month. Now let's fast forward to some of the more recent news that StockX has been the headline of and this is where we enter in probably the biggest company giant of them all in the sneaker game Nike. Nike first set their sights on StockX when they made their introduction into the world of NFTs. Now when StockX's NFT program first launched it really did seem like they had very high hopes for this program or for the sales of this. They seem to put a lot of effort on it. After all, NFTs were and I guess are at an all-time high in terms of popularity. Now, not to get too deep into what StockX's NFTs actually were, it basically gave you the opportunity to virtually trade sneakers.
Seeker NFTs. Now, by purchasing one of these NFTs, you are promised by StockX that there is a physical, actual shoe of that NFT kept in a vault somewhere. And apparently the vault is air conditioned. Now, again, that's a very basic overview of what their NFT program is. There is a little bit more details, but if we get into all of it, we're gonna be here for days. Anyway, shortly after StockX launched their NFT program, Nike piped up and they actually served StockX with a lawsuit. In the suit, Nike states that StockX has chosen to compete in the NFT market, not by taking the time to develop its own intellectual property rights, but rather by blatantly free riding almost exclusively on the back of Nike's famous trademarks and associated goodwill. Now this story gets much deeper, but it is important to note the other side of this, because before StockX launched their NFT program, Nike was making big strides in the NFT space. Nike actually acquired the digital art studio artifact in preparation of launching their own NFTs. This makes a lot of people believe that the whole StockX and Nike thing is merely just a clear indication that Nike is going after StockX because they don't want them to compete in this space. StockX went on to refute the claims made by Nike, calling it baseless and misleading. So what happens after all of this? Well, after a bit of time, we don't hear too much about any of this. StockX continues to sell their NFTs, but does double down on really trying to explain to people what these NFTs are. They really do repeat that owning one of these NFTs is merely just a token of ownership of the physical sneaker, kind of like a receipt. But Nike works in the shadows again. They go back to the drawing board and come back with another slam. And they came back to amend the original lawsuit filing to include counterfeiting, which Nike went on to say that it had purchased four pairs of fake sneakers from the platform. Now, only one of the four fake sneakers was actually named by Nike and that was the Jordan 1 Patton bread. Now this was a massive story that absolutely rocked the sneaker game. I mean, having the actual creator of these sneakers say that they purchased fake pairs from StockX, it's like, what is there to argue about? These are clearly fakes, right? Well, in StockX's response, they outline how seriously they take customer protection and how they've invested millions to fight counterfeit pairs. They went on to say that Nike's latest filing is not only baseless, but is also curious, given the confidence that Nike's own brand protection team has communicated in our authentication program, and that hundreds of Nike employees, including senior executives, use StockX to buy and sell products. Stating that this is nothing more than a panicked and desperate attempt to resuscitate its losing legal case against our innovative NFT program. So yeah, on one hand you have Nike, which is pretty much confirming what most sneakerheads seem to want to believe about StockX. On the other hand, Nike is fighting a legal battle, and the actual details and extent of StockX selling fakes is pretty vague. Like, how many sneakers in total did Nike have to buy to find these four fake sneakers? And if they are selling fakes, how come Nike hasn't spoken spoke up about it beforehand, especially if apparently hundreds of Nike employees are using the platform. Either way, it doesn't look great for StockX, especially when there's other platforms popping up offering similar services like eBay, Goat, Collect, and the bunch of other ones that are out there. StockX was also in the news again recently for another fake sneaker scandal. According to Sneaker Strut on Instagram, he bought $10,000 of sneakers through StockX over the last month. In total, that was 62 pairs of Jordan 1s, a couple different colorways, University Blues, Mochas, and Hyper Royals. He claimed out of those 62 pairs, 32 of them failed authentication at the Check Check and Legit Check app, basically claiming that the majority of the pairs he purchased were in fact fake. Again, only Sneaker Strut really knows if this is true or not. But even by the story, using these legit checking apps to prove the authenticity of these sneakers is not really a 100% guaranteed way of doing that. I mean, both of these apps are literally just virtually legit checking your sneakers through images. So it's definitely not foolproof, but we may never know whether this is a true story or not. So with all of this unfolding, and if the people's trust in StockX is at an all-time low, is it justified? Or is StockX just being dealt a bad hand? Well, you can make your own mind up, and while you're doing that, let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know your thought process. But listen, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for liking, commenting, and of course, subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then.